Hi everyone, in this video, we're going to learn about something completely new. We're going to learn about timers in JavaScript, more specifically the functions that make that up, and those are set timeout, set interval, and request animation frame. There's a lot of content we're going to cover in a short period of time, so let's get started. So as you know by now, your code runs synchronously, and it's basically a fancy way of saying that your code executes the moment your browser runs into it. You have a statement, the code executes. There's no concept of delaying when the code executes or deferring the work to a later time at least not by default. To change that behavior, you have what are known as the JavaScript timers. And it's a, it's a catch-all phrase for the three functions you see listed right here. The first one is set timeout. And this function allows you to specify some code and a time to wait between when you want that code to actually execute. So basically a delay. You have set interval. And this one runs code repeatedly with a delay that you specify between each repeat. So if you want something to run every two seconds, set interval is a perfect one to, to use. And then you have probably my favorite function of all time. You have request animation frame. And this function requests a repaint operation and runs code as part of the repaint. It's great for syncing up with animation and movement. Okay, so what we've just done is taken a very high level overview of what these three functions do. Very vague on details, of course. So let's go ahead and fix that by looking at each one and learning more about how to use them, starting with set timeout. So the set timeout function basically allows you to delay when you want to execute some code. And the way you use it is as follows. You have your window object and you call the set timeout function on it and you specify two arguments. The first argument specifies the code you want to run. It could be a function, it could be inline code, it could be anything. And the second argument specifies how long to wait before the code executes, and that's a value in milliseconds. So let's take a look at how this function looks. I have a simple example going here. I have a function called draw text, and what this function does is it draws the pound character where the p element currently is in HTML. If I, if I were to call it draw text right now, you'll see exactly what it does. Notice that the pound character is displayed. All right. So now let's go ahead and use set timeout and let's look at what exactly it does. I'm going to type in window.setTimeout. And the first argument is going to be the draw text function. The second argument will be how long to wait before this function gets called. Let's give it a value of two seconds, which in milliseconds is 2000. Okay, great. So I save my document and you'll see that in two seconds, the pound character appears. If I were to change this to, let's say, five seconds, you know, had to wait longer. You had to wait one, two, three, four. Five, and then in five seconds, you know, you see that the pound character appears. That's pretty cool. Now, the thing is, it is pretty simple. In the example that I showed in the slides though, I noticed, you might have noticed that I actually had it set to the, a, vari a variable, in this case, time ID. And what I'm doing here is simple. This function returns a timestamp value, which allows you to, a combination of timestamp and some other things that is basically a unique identifier. It allows you to identify this particular set timeout function so you can refer to it later. Now, there aren't too many times you wanna to refer to the, a function like set timeout, except when you are canceling it. So let me go back and show you what this means. So let's say I'm gonna say bar time ID equals window.set timeout 5000. Now let's say that if for whatever reason, I wanna cancel the timeout function, I can just call clear timeout in the window object and specify the exact same value for time ID. And this, this particular thing is something you'll see common across set timeout, set interval, and request animation frame. But its primary use, at least that I've found, is to allow you to cancel the, a particular timer operation once you've kicked it off. All right, so that's set timeout. Next one is a slightly more fun one. It's set interval. And set interval allows you to, it, it looks very similar to set timeout, but what it does is where set timeout only ran some code once after a specified delay, set interval runs some code repeatedly, and the delay between each repeat is what you specify in the second argument. So the first function is the code you want to execute, and the second function is how long to wait before you repeat the code over and over and over again. So let's take a look at that. So with set timeout, you saw something once. Let's just call this one window.setInterval. And the first argument is again going to be draw text. And let me specify an argument in this case of 2000. So every two seconds, the draw, draw, draw text function is going to get called. And you'll see that the first instance of it happened, second instance. So six seconds have elapsed since I started this code running, eight seconds, and so on. And this code will run pretty much forever. And again, the way you cancel it is by giving it a, a value like var time ID, equals window set interval and then calling the window.clearInterval method in this case and specifying the same exact value for time ID. 
in this case, it's a second like tried example, so the timer never actually has a chance to get called. But you can imagine what it would be if, let's say, I had a button click or some other way of handling an event where I call this one after the timer has been running for a while. Cool. So the next one, like I mentioned earlier, my most favorite function of all time is request animation frame. And this is a function that's really geared towards ensuring you're animating and doing things that are more visual. And the way you set it up is, I'm gonna show you the first way how to set it up, but then I'm gonna give you a more realistic way of doing it. It's very simple, just like everything else, except you take you specify only one argument. You have request animation frame, and then you specify the function that you wanna call that you want to essentially tie to your graphics card or your screen's refresh or redraw operation. And canceling it is pretty similar as well. Now the thing is, the way request animation frame works is that's not the most compelling case for it. So for example, let's type in request animation frame and specify draw text. All right, so the moment I specify that, you'll see some text getting displayed. Not particularly exciting, like it, it ties itself into your browser's painting operation. And we're, this is simple in an example, so there's a paint happening all the time. So it's almost nearly instantaneous when the pound sign appears. Now, what makes request animation frame more interesting is if you want to rapidly run some code synchronized with your frame rate. So if you want like 60 frames a second kind of an animation, you'd use request animation frame and not something that's not tied to the, the display, display pipeline. So the way you use request animation frame is you specify it as part of a function you want to loop and then you specify it inside it and call it loop again. Now, for most functions, something like this where I have animation loop and then I have request animation frame, animation loop inside it, will result in a hung operation. You've had, you basically have, you just expand your stack to the point where nothing really happens. But with request animation frame, it actually results in something that is pretty sensible. So let's take a look at what that sensible looks like. So I'm gonna create my function, function animation loop. No need for, no need for an argument. And then just call this one immediately as well. Animation loop, okay. So nothing, nothing fancy going on here. I declared if I create a function and I'm basically just calling it. So let me say draw text. Great. And if everything works, it gets called just once and the pound sign appears. Now let me call a request animation frame on it. Frame draw text. Okay, great. And once I have, sorry, not draw text, animation loop. Now, so notice, notice what's happening. I'm scrolling down very quickly but the pound characters is being drawn at a very, very rapid rate. And the rate is completely in sync with how quickly my browser is going to be repainting and refreshing the particular screen. Now I cover request animation frame in much greater detail in a separate video that I have an article as well. So I'm not going to go into, you know, going to go much further into this, but just know that if you want to create some really cool animations, you definitely, you know, don't want to use set interval or set timeout, but you want to request animation frame because it is designed to give you the smoothest animation and take into account how much CPU is your browser is using, how much GPU is using, whether the tab is visible or not. All these things are very important to create efficient and performant animations in an, in an environment where you might your browser is competing with other, other activities for priority and getting things done. All right, so we covered a lot of ground here, like I mentioned at the very beginning. We looked at set timeout, which runs some code after a specified delay. We looked at set interval, which loops some code repeatedly with a delay that you specify. Then we looked at request animation frame, which is very different than the other two in that you don't specify a delay, but instead you hope your code runs each time your browser repaints. So all good stuff around. So with that, you can learn more. Go to crypto.com. There are a lot of articles on JavaScript and animation and other topics that you might be, you know, might be interested in. If you have any questions, post in the forums at forum.crypto.com. And of course, find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And I'll be happy to take a look at your question and help solve it. And if you found this very interesting, there are many more articles, hundreds and hundreds of pages of content that can covers other JavaScript topics beyond just timers in my book, JS101, JavaScript for Beginners. And you can find it on Amazon in paperback and Kindle editions. So tell your friends. Talk to you guys later. Bye.